The toolbar in Photoshop is huge. I mean, there are more than 60 tools you gotta choose from. Wow, boy. It can be really hard to understand them all, but today is your lucky day. In just a few minutes, you will master the most important tools in Photoshop. First, the toolbar is located on the left side of your workspace. If you want, you can make the tools sit there in one row or in two rows by clicking the expand button. All right, let's start with the move and selection tools. The first one is, of course, the move tool. If you select a layer in the layer panel, you can move around the selected image. You can't move around other layers because only this one is selected. However, you can enable auto select on top. That way Photoshop will change the selected layer to whichever one you click on. It's that simple. Next up we have the rectangular marquee tool. You can use it to select a part of your layer. For example this window. Imagine we want to change the outside view. To do that select the first part of the window. Then if you hold down shift you can actually create multiple selections. Now you can create a mask which removes everything but the window. Of course we want the opposite and to do that hit ctrl plus i on your keyboard. This will invert the mask. Now if you drag a picture in Photoshop you can simply put it underneath the layer and BAM! There you go. The next tool is called the lasso tool. You can use it to draw a selection around an image. Let's say I want to remove the clouds from my picture. Simply draw a selection around the clouds and when you're done, click the generate a fill button. Then click on generate. Congratulations, you've just used some Photoshop AI. Wow, that's amazing. The polygonal lasso tool does the same thing, but this one works with a straight edged selection outline, which can be very useful. Let's take a look at this box, for example. You can just mask it out like that. Awesome. Next up, we have the object selection tool. You can click and drag to create a rough selection in your picture. If you hold down shift, you can actually shrink your selection as well. Next, we're gonna take a look at the quick selection tool. With this one, you can literally create a quick box around this person, for example. And there you go, Photoshop will select it automatically. Now you can mask it out and perhaps change the background, whatever you wanna do. Next, we're gonna take a look at the crop tools. The crop tool does what it says. You can literally create a selection and when you release the mouse, your canvas size will change to your selection. Now with the frame tool, you can do some really creative stuff. Let's again replace the inside of this window, for example. All you need to do is make this selection and then drag a picture into Photoshop. You can still move it around to your liking. Now, let's say you want to know the exact color of this car. That's where the eyedropper tools comes in. Simply select a color and then on the bottom left, you can see it. You can now use it to create a shape in that exact same color. That is nice. And now it's time to learn the retouching and painting tools. First, choose the spot healing brush tool. Let's say we have this picture of this kid with a dirty face. Now, I want to clean up the chocolate. To do that, simply click on the spot you want to remove. If you right click, you can actually change the settings like size and hardness. I mean, that's awesome. Now the patch tool can be used for the same purpose. Let's remove this car logo for example. Instead of clicking, you need to draw a selection. Then you can drag the selection out of the way and Photoshop will replace it with another part of your picture and it will be blend in perfectly. Next, the painting tools. The brush tool is Photoshop's primary painting tool. You can literally use it to paint on a layer. You can again right click and adjust the size and hardness. And you can even change between types of brushes. Now let me make the background a little darker and that looks awesome. Now the clone stamp tool can be used to sample pictures from one area and then you can paste them somewhere else. For example this berry. To do that right click it and adjust the size of your stamp tool. Then hold down alt and click on your desired spot to sample it. Now you can just click wherever you want to paste it like that. Next the eraser tool. With this one you can permanently erase pixels on a layer. For example this car. It's that simple. Now let's check out the gradient tool. With this tool you can basically create a gradient super Super quick. You can of course change and style the type of gradient in the top properties. Next we're gonna take a look at the blur tool. You can use it to literally blur your selection. This can be great to blur faces, license plates or play with the depth of field of your image. Now the sharpen tool can be used for the exact opposite. You can use it to sharpen a face in your picture for example. Alright next up we have the dodge tool. This one you can use to paint over areas in an image to lighten them. With the burn tool you can again do the exact opposite and make areas darker. Okay now it's time to check out the drawing and type tools. Starting with the pen tool. This tool allows you to draw extremely precise pads, shapes or selections. For example, the Photoshop icons you saw in the thumbnail, I actually used the pen tool to draw them in Photoshop. If you hover your mouse over an anchor point, you can remove it by simply clicking it. You can also add another one by clicking somewhere on your pad. If you hold down Alt, the convert pin point will be enabled and you can use it now to smoothen up your pad. Now if you hold Alt again, you can adjust these levers individually. Alright, let's move on to the type tool. You can 
obviously use that to type text on your canvas. Again, if you move to the property panel on the right, you can adjust and style your text. Next, with the pad selection tool, you can move an entire pad. When you click it, all the anchor points will be selected. Now, if you use a direct selection tool, you can adjust these anchor points individually. With the rectangle tool, you can of course draw rectangular vector shapes. You can then adjust the corners from sharp to rounded. If you press shift when drawing, you will create a square instead of a rectangle. The same rule applies to the ellipse tool, by the way. The next tools we're going to take a look at are the navigation tools. Now, I don't really use them a lot, and let me show you why. With the hand tool selected, you can move around your canvas, which is cool, but you can already do that by holding down the space bar on your keyboard. It really doesn't matter which tool you have selected. Let's say we have the pen tool. When you hold down the space bar, you can move around your canvas as much as you want. And the same thing counts for the zoom tool. When you hold down Alt, you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse, so no need for using the zoom tool in the toolbar. Next, we're going to focus a little more on the text tool, and to continue the lesson, click the video right here on my left. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, stay creative.